Well, Governor Susana Martinez is waking up down in Tampa, Florida this morning after having a very big night at the Republican National Convention. From the state of New Mexico, the first Hispanic female governor in the history. On behalf of the great state of New Mexico. There she is. Governor Martinez took the stage right before Paul Ryan, who is running for vice president. The governor spoke for about 10 minutes. She cracked a few jokes, took a few shots at President Obama, but more importantly, she told people that even though the president has not been a leader in her mind, she has right here in New Mexico, especially with the state's budget. But we came together in a bipartisan manner and turned that deficit into a surplus. And we did it without raising taxes. But that's not the kind of leadership that we're seeing from President Obama. Governor Martinez also talked about her life growing up in El Paso to becoming a district attorney here in New Mexico and eventually the governor. And of course, she urged everyone to vote for Mitt Romney. And it is certainly no secret that Republicans picked Governor Martinez to reach out to Hispanic and female voters, but some of them are saying she doesn't speak for them. A group called Women for Obama rallied in response to the governor's speech last night, saying that supporting Mitt Romney and the Republicans means preventative health care for women will get more expensive. Other Latino groups say that the governor wanting to repeal the law that gives driver's licenses to illegal immigrants is an attack on the Latino community. Now, the governor did not talk about immigration in her speech last night. The Republican Party is trying to paint itself as moderate, as, as pro-women, as pro-Hispanic. Uh, the record speaks for itself. Uh, if Romney is elected, there's talk that he could ask Governor Martinez to be in his cabinet, but she has said that she would not take the job if that were the case. Mitt Romney will accept his nomination as president pick for the Republican Party tonight, and as he does, some New Mexicans here will be speaking out about what they think about him. Local advocates, seniors, and families will gather at Comanche and Vassar to express their disapproval of Romney's economic plan for the country. They claim the GOP nominee is, quote, bad for our health and plan to quarantine his office that's located here in Albuquerque today. It all starts at 10 a.m. And we will have more coverage as Mitt Romney accepts his nomination as presidential pick for the Republican Party tonight. And then next Tuesday, it's the Democrats' turn. The Democratic National Convention gets underway in Charlotte, North Carolina. We will have both events on air and online at KRQE.com. In other news, this morning it's another day and another set of problems for Lobo football coach Bob Davey. Two more players have been suspended from his team. Rod Davis and Fatu Ulali are now suspended for something the coach says they did last season, using the university's FedEx account to ship some of their personal stuff home. That is against the NCAA rules, so now Davis is suspended for two games and Ulali for four. When I came into this, my eyes were wide open. But that's not just at the University of New Mexico. Um, that's any place a new head coach comes in. The new head coach comes in for a reason. In fact, I went through the whole spring where I said to our staff every day, I was surprised that there weren't really more issues. Coach Davey also suspended two other players earlier this week after they got arrested last weekend. And when Bob Davey became the head football coach of the Lobos, he vowed to clean up the program both on and off the field. Besides players dealing and getting in trouble, Coach Davey is trying to overcome the Lobos' 3-33 and 33 record. The past three years plus, he's trying to get more people into the stands here. As of yesterday, UNM has sold just 18,000 tickets for Saturday's game against Southern. This morning, police are investigating a child abuse case that has a young girl fighting for her life. The five-year-old Bloomfield girl is in the hospital after doctors say she was severely beaten. Her father, Daniel Garcia, is locked up, charged with abusing her. Investigators say it appears she has brain injuries and cannot breathe on her own. They also say she has cigarette burns on her hands. Garcia denies he hurt the girl. A bad wreck on a New Mexico highway kills one person and sent 11 others to the hospital. State police say 12 Mexican nationals were traveling in a van off of US 54 near Santa Rosa early Wednesday morning when a tire blew out. The van rolled several times. Three people were ejected. One died at the scene. Police do not think the driver was drinking. Well, there is a very good chance you will be able to vote on paying for the Paseo I-25 project this November. Yesterday, Attorney General Gary King said the issue can go on the ballot as long as the city drops its rules saying voters have to show their IDs at the polls. Voters in Albuquerque have to show their IDs before they vote. Most others in the state, even in the county, do not. 
City Council could go ahead and vote to approve the money without a public vote. That could happen next month, and it's something that Mayor R.J. Berry wants, but he doesn't think will happen. I support getting the project done. It's long overdue. Uh, we've got a game plan and, and a path forward on that. I certainly support the seven votes. Um, just to step up and show the leadership to, uh, to get this thing done. Uh, it's short of that, if it has to go on the November 6th ballot, and that's a way that it goes on, uh, and it's a one-time situation, that is something that I would uh, not veto. Albuquerque City Council is set to vote on the Paseo project next week. We'll let you know what happens. A funeral home here in Albuquerque will be out of business soon because the state is shutting it down. A state funeral director's board is suspending the license for Salazar and Sons Mortuary, but will not say why. The funeral home has been open for 93 years here in downtown Albuquerque. Now it has two weeks to finish things up before it has to close.